Thank you. Thank you. How you been? Nah, nah, man. I had, I had a kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. That part's awesome. Uh, but uh, my handicap is greatly suffering. Actually, you know, I played I played the first time in a while on a Saturday. What if they ate Raven Claw? And I was yeah. like, you know what? That's totally great. Yeah. So I was very happy with that. I didn't do it until like. It was over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> you still have a great swing, though. Like you could come around. You just need to catch like, a window where one of them like starts to like want to play. Like, oh, I'll go hit some yeah. balls, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot. How about that? Mm -hmm. How about that? Can't wait to say that. It's gonna be so ridiculous. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go with live. Well, we got three people watching. Yeah. So, I mean, I pushed it back real quick with the camera, but you guys can just come in you and snuggle in here. Yeah. I'll actually get away for anything with the words on, but so. I know you're, you're on. You got to come on. Yeah. There's the point. Oh, right. is this the internet? You guys heard of this? <laughs> Wow. So, guys, um, Corey Barrett's here with, with um, Barrett's Law. Uh, they are going to talk about tomorrow at the networking ring events uh, about tenant landlord law. And I can tell you personally that since the days of Atlas to the days of TCS, that we have absolutely sent everything we have their way when it comes to that because they are minimum employees in that room. So, it is going to be, if you have the time now, ask questions. You can see, you can post it right below, and, and Corey can answer anything he's to say and um, while we do this George is going to entertain everybody because that's what he does so make sure you guys come out tomorrow I'll hand it over to George and I see any up. questions yeah let me get out of the place. all right so uh, let me <laughs> my man's got a tile so I want to make sure I look professional let me just tilt this in a little bit so everybody can see so um so if you guys want some free legal advice like now's the time to get it right <laughs> Uh, side note, um, I've heard a lot of good things about you. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about you from Ian and such. I'm real excited to hear you speak. Um, so I wholesale property. I don't, I don't really own any, any rentals, so I don't run into, sorry, I don't run into uh, landlord and, uh, issues on that front. But like, for some reason, every time somebody wants to sell me a house, there's a squatter in it. There's a, uh, you know, there's a hostile tenant. There's an eviction that needs to be done, and I'm, I'm very well aware of. Uh, how important it is to have like accurate and competent legal representation. And so, if you don't mind, like real quick, I'd love to hear you know who you do a lot of business with, or who you find yourself uh, being in meetings with a lot. What type of investor is somebody that um, you you know consistently talk to? So we we handle a lot of um, large apartment complex type landlords and owners. We handle mom and pop type similars of, of, of homes, mm -hmm. um, everything in between residential, commercial, um, kind of on the gamut on all different um, landlords and, you know, the landlord tenant, you know, uh, situation and core of eviction clause. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing you brought up about purchasing the property when someone's in it, um, that is a problem. It's obviously not recommended to do that, especially if it's a tenant in there. You do not want in there when you purchase the property. Um, I would always recommend if there is someone in there that you try to get as much information about the tenant who's in there as possible. Uh, the lease agreement they're in there on with the old owner um, and, and whatever other documentation you can get, the old you know, housing inspection license, certificate of suitability, all that stuff. If the old owner ever did those things, um, because it's difficult. If you have a, a tough tenant in there that's not going to be uh, paying once you own the property or is going to be otherwise causing issues or services or damage or anything, it's tough to get them out if you don't have all that ongoing information. Uh, yep. Awesome. Okay. So uh, to paraphrase that in English as opposed to legalese, right? Now, that was actually really good. Um, so don't buy a house that's got a tenant in it. And if you do, make sure that you've got all your dot, I's, dot, I's, T's, cross, probably not buy a competent attorney who knows what they're doing first. Make sure you don't get screwed. Um, one thing I noticed that you didn't say is it doesn't sound like you do any representation of tenants against landlords. In core, we're generally representing landlords. Right. Um, that's, that's a great we're in there every day with the high volume of right. cases and um, you know, 30, 40, 50 yeah, cases wow. per list um, yeah. of landlords. Um, so we do um, get inquiries from the tenant side as well, but we personally 
would be in court handling land or cases for all this far back. So important distinction for you guys out there. So this isn't the guy that's going to be trying to screw you over and you know your tenant doesn't want to pay you rent anymore. This is the guy that's going to try to, to, to ride on his white horse and save you, um, possibly thousands and thousands of dollars, whether it's uh, lost rent um, or just costs for other kinds of BS that you can pop up. Philadelphia is a very tenant-friendly uh, court system, I believe. Right? Yeah, there, there's a lot of um, tenant ad advocacy type groups and um, tenant legal aid groups that would represent tenants in court um, and there's a lot of rules and regulations and ordinances and things that have gone into effect over the past few years that have certainly made it um, a little bit more friendly for tenants for sure in my opinion but um, it, it's all the more reason why you need to be aware of all the new ordinances and rules and laws that come into effect because as long as you're in compliance you're okay the problem you run into is when you're not in compliance to you because you knew and didn't do what you're supposed to do or because you just didn't know about it um, if you're not an attorney, if you're not up to speed on all these things that come into play, um, that's what you need someone to really um, sit you down and explain to you, an attorney who's in this in this field. Great. Uh, so it sounds like the government's have to screw us out of our investments and money. We got it. And uh, the same way that you get like a doctor or a dentist that really knew what they were doing to like fix you, you want a competent attorney to uh, fix a problem that might come up, so to speak, what you're saying. There's, there's a lot of new things need to be diagnosed or talked about constantly coming up on, on a regular basis. It's good to have some of this going on. Do you hear us say 30 or 40 people a day? <laughs> Jeez. Is that everything? Yeah, we're uh, probably somewhere between 30 and 50 on the list each morning, and there's afternoon lists also, which uh, we have some of those lists as well. So it's in there every day. Yeah, the number of people yeah, that's really nifty. Um, so what types of things uh, can we expect you to be shining some light on for us or talking about at the re-meeting in person at the at the Medium Brewery tomorrow at 7 p.m.? So I'd, I'd kind of start by probably going through the process of a landlord-tenant case, an eviction case to be filed. Um, what you should do from the very, from the very beginning, um, what documents you'll need to file a case, um, and then what you need to bring into our, our office or if you're filing on your own, to, to bring into the court to be able to file, um, and the proper ways to file a case. There are a few different bases or ways or reasons why you can file, whether it's not being a rent or a lease term being over, uh, or some other type of breach of the lease agreement, damages, disturbances, and long those occupants, something like that. Um, and then all the different rules and regulations that need to be followed and documents you need to have obtained in advance and supplied to the tenant in order to actually be able to collect rent or get possession back to your property in court. Um, and then kind of the process through court once you're in there and then what can happen on the back end, how you can actually obtain possession and some of the ways where tenants can kind of lengthen the process quite significantly and um, if they really don't want to go. Um, some things you can look out for and kind of work from there. So it sounds like um, we're going to get some pointers on what to look out for to make sure that you're not getting screwed. We're also going to be expecting a little bit of information about uh, how to do things more confidently on our own if that's the way that we want to go, and as well as just some general tips and tricks to make sure that your legal representation is doing what they're supposed to. Yeah, sure. And, and the one thing I'd say about doing it on your own, I mean, everyone's obviously, it's less costly, certainly, to do it that way. I would you really know, never know. recommend that. Yeah, or, um, not don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Here comes you, the lender, ruin everyone's don't, fun. Don't, whether you hire us or someone else, that's okay, but there's so many, right, there, there's such a prevalence of um, land, uh, tenant side attorneys in court now and legal aid groups that are in court representing the tenants that it, it's really not a good idea to go on there unrepresented um, because especially, I mean, as I said, with all the things that have been passing, um, you're, you're not going to know all the things that you need to know in order to be able to successfully get um, either an agreement to get the money repaid to you by the tenant or an agreement to get them to vacate the property or if you're going in front of the judge for a trial to potentially be successful there. Um, it's just tough to do that without knowing everything that you need to know. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's well said for sure. Um, any, any, uh, any other tips, tricks, uh, little hacks you want, to, uh, you want to tease everyone with before we start taking questions? Um, no, I think we kind of got to a lot of the um, talking points we'll probably get to tomorrow a lot. I'm happy to, to take any questions. Awesome. So there's a little bit of a delay between when we see things come through and when you see them. So if you have a question, just type it into the comments thing now. We see all that stuff as soon as you hop in. And uh, 
want to give us a little little life story here real quick while we wait for people to uh, hop in some queues? Sure. So, you know, in addition to playing with the town, well, I do uh, a lot of criminal defense work as well. So I started out law school. the same people. It's <laughs> incredible. So actually, I started out law school doing uh, strictly criminal defense um, for three and a half years. And then I joined up with my father and my brother um, at Barrett's Law, you know, Kent Mel Barrett's and Associates, where I work now. And, and my dad has been doing landlord tenant law for 35, 40 years. Um, my brother Todd came in a handful of years before I did, and now I'm in there, so it's the three of us. Any combination of, of us are in there, sometimes all three of us, sometimes one or two of us. Um, I went to Emory University for undergrad, Temple for law school, and uh, I've always kind of been in the Philadelphia area other than the house of Emory. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about me. Awesome. So let's say we've got a question here from uh, Joe Boogie. Um, he said, I have a judgment for $3,000 against my tenant. Can they appeal it? So it depends. It depends if the, I'm assuming you got a judgment entered in landlord tenant court against them. It will depend on whether it was a judgment by agreement or whether it was a judgment by default if the tenant didn't show up to court or if it was a judgment entered by the judge after a trial against the court. If it was a judgment by agreement where you sat down with a mediator, if you were unrepresented, both sides by counsel, if did not have counsel, you'd sit down with the court appointed mediator, and if you got an agreement for a judgment, they should not be able to appeal that. A uh, major benefit of the agreement is that it's not appealable, it's final, it's binding. Um, if they were not in court, so it's a judgment by default, they can potentially appeal through what's called a petition of open default judgment. If it was a judgment entered by the judge after a trial in municipal court, they also have a time frame to be able to appeal that to common police court for a new trial or common police court. So it depends what kind of judgment you got in. Cool. Um, so as you guys can see, important that you come out, right? Like most people are like, oh yeah, whatever, this will take 20 minutes. This is a legal process can sometimes be uh, a little bit more drawn out than just running down to the courthouse and filing a piece of paper. It's, it's important that you're educated. It's important that you know what you're looking for. It's important that you have competent legal counsel. Um, we'll give this another couple minutes to see if anybody else has any uh, has any questions. And then again, tomorrow night, Wednesday, uh, July 12th at 7 p.m., Manny on Brewery, 4120 Main Street in the glorious city of Philadelphia. If you own property in Philadelphia, or near Philadelphia, or if you're expecting to own anything in or near the city of Philadelphia in the next year or even two, you have to be at this event. Um, there'll be all kinds of cool people in the room. There'll be, whoa. You guys like Corey, obviously, will have lenders, better repair people, places to get off market deals, places to get one market deals, and a lot of other cool stuff. So, um, question, think, question for you yeah. uh, as a wholesaler, George, have you ever had to get counsel for tenant or remove a tenant from a property? Yeah, we're uh, we're evicting somebody right now on behalf of someone, and uh, we deal with a lot of squatters. It pops up for wholesalers a lot. So typically, like, you want to do cash for keys, but if somebody keeps stalling, and you know, like. What are you going to do, right? You got to evict them. You got to get them out. I actually did buy a property with the tenant in it, and it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare getting her out. It was like the, the written lease wasn't right. There was all these, there was all these other issues. And Philadelphia has uh, traditionally been a very big, like, kind of word of mouth city, or not word of mouth, but like spit in a handshake. So there's a lot of like tenants out there, especially depending on the neighborhood that you're operating in, that like, have been paying rent for this long period of time, but there was never a credit check, there was never a background check, there was never a written lease. So the landlord might tell you, hey, yeah, everything's good, this guy pays $800 a month. And then when you go to uh, a victim, it turns into an ejection, which can be a nightmare. So that's uh, exactly what I was just going to talk about. Yep. So there's there's two different ways or, or that uh, people in a property can be, can be considered. One is a tenant, in which case you could file a landlord tenant eviction action. Um, that's generally if there's a written lease agreement, so on three to pay rent, they pay rent at some point. The other situation is if it's really a squatter, um, a lot of times it would be a family member who who's the owner allowed to live in there without paying any rent. There was never an agreement on that side. Um, then you may have to file an ejectment, which is a common police court, not in this court. Um, it's a lot of times a lot more costly. It's There's a lot more involved. It could be a much lengthier process, um, and, and it's a more difficult way to have to handle those things. But you don't really have a choice. I mean, you're left with what you're left with. Is you have a tenant, you have a municipal court eviction action. If you don't have a tenant, then you have to file an objection. Yep, get a written lease, people. Got a couple questions here. Uh, one from Nikki. Uh, how long does it take to get a court date? 
So for a regular landlord tenant eviction case, um, from the date that you file a complaint, so assuming all your documents are in order and you get them filed properly, you're going to get a hearing date um, that is scheduled about 30 days later. Um, so if you file today, July 11th, you're probably looking sometime in the second week of August, first or second week of August, for your fourth date. Um, and then from the date of your hearing, um, if you are successful in getting your judgment on from that date, you're going to have another 30 or 40 days from then to actually get possession back to your property, assuming it goes as fast as humanly possible and the tenant doesn't pay up and the tenant doesn't vacate or file any types of appeals. So from start to finish, you're looking at at least 60 to 70 days from the date of filing in order to get possession back or, you know, if the tenant would have to pay up. Yep. So you can see just from what he said there how important it is, again, to have competent legal representation and not try to do this yourself. we got one more question here. Uh, is there any type of waiver that a tenant can sign waiving his rights if an eviction ever comes about to speed up the process? Great question. Thanks, Jeff. It is a good question. It It's not really going to do anything for you. Tenants or landlords will waive all sorts of things in a lease or in some type of agreement beforehand. Um, if you want to get someone out and they're a tenant in Philadelphia, you need to file a uh, regular landlord tenant complaint. The hearing is going to be scheduled. Uh, as I said, in the time frame I just mentioned, about 30 days. Um, now they can sign off on things saying they waive certain defenses or they waive certain notice requirements and this and that, but it, it's not going to speed up the process much um, at all, in my opinion. Any parting words, gentlemen? Uh, 7 p.m. tomorrow night, 4120 Main Street. We'll have uh, food, some fun, and uh, a gang of knowledge and a whole whole big pile of cool people to talk to and such. Um, just want to say thanks for having me. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Corey. We'll have to answer some questions tomorrow night. Cool. Good to go. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Cool. Uh, no problem. Yeah, we got a hot mic here. Oh, hot hot mic, mic. Yeah.